Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Friday. Friday the 22nd. Almost done with March 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Now, uh, this, uh, what I've got up on here is, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, a family member. He's, uh, he's my grandmother's, he's on my grandmother's on my mother's side. A family member, but he's started to become a musical artist and he's posting a lot of videos music videos on YouTube and I think he's pretty good why you guys I'm gonna put his a link to this video in the description check it out and see what you think <laughs> anyway <clears throat> we're gonna get started and take a look at what's going on here uh, here you go. I, I, I would say don't pay any attention to the, to the right side of this graph. Uh, because it's all put in by somebody. Somebody is just... But this left side of the graph shows... What, what this is showing is, is, is birth... Like how much fertility the world has right now. And it's listing the different areas of the world, you know. But one thing they all have in common, uh, if you look at the left side of this graph, is fertility rates are dropping like a stone. Now, somebody drew in, this is basically, somebody just drew in the, the projection out into the future. But the line in the middle represents where we are right now. So just look on the left side and you see how this is dropping like a stone. Uh, this projection out into the future might be, is because it's just written in, you know, the lines just went straight. This, this could be a much steeper decline than, than, they're, than they're projecting. It could be extremely steep because it's been steep since 1960 until about the year 2020. And, and this is fertility. And this is going to mean how many... <clears throat> this is the first time in 700 years that they're projecting that the world population is going to go into a decline. It's, starting, it's pretty much starting right away because of fertility rates dropping. And it's going to this process is going to continue. It's going to get a lot worse. So... For all these people out there who are saying, "Oh, the world is overpopulated, and the world is the population is growing to, uh, at an enormous speed, and we'll run out of resource and all this stuff," no, the world's population right now we're we're uh, we're going to be on the endangered species list pretty damn soon, and I don't see any way of bringing it back. How do you how do you uh, how do you bring fertility back again once it's gone because of different factors like plastics and stuff like that radiation you know everybody in the earth this this date right here 1960 take a look at that line 1960 and you can see it, it was pretty stable fertility rates were pretty stable up until 1960 1960 the Russians dropped the Tsar bomb which blew radiation, and you know, all the people up until 1960 didn't have strontium-90 in their bones. All the people born after 1960 have strontium-90 in their bones. And it you don't get rid of it. It stays. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> With more delightful news. Uh... 128 meter asteroids approaching Earth right now. 128 meters. It's, it's flying like 50,000 miles an hour or whatever. And that's a big one. It says NASA, NASA the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, has announced that asteroid 2024, EU4, will make a close approach to Earth on Saturday, March 23rd. But there's more. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, there's another one approaching. Uh, which one was it here? I read about. There's two. Uh, asteroid 2024 BD7 
So there's asteroid 2024 EU4, and there's asteroid 2024 BD7 is going to make a close approach to Earth on March 19th, Tuesday, March 19th. What is it with this? We're getting all these meteors that are coming close to the Earth, you know? This, one of them sooner or later is going to hit us. We didn't get all these flybys so much going back, or maybe they didn't detect them as well. I'm just not exactly sure. We did have a hit, a, a possible hit. I'm very doubtful whether it was a hit back in, in uh, well, we had that one over Russia too. A couple over Russia. One in the recent history that flew over a city in Russia, big loud boom, and it broke windows and everything else. And then going back to 1918, they had a, a what was called a Tunguska explosion. But the Tunguska explosion, I'm not absolutely certain that that was a, a meteor. Just saying. Now, also, it's, uh, there's a lot of activity on the sun right now. Uh, the sun is blasting a huge rass of coronal discharges. Look at the look at the size of that coronal discharge. When you consider the circumference of the sun, that thing must have blasted off out into space like, oh my goodness, look at the size of the thing. So the sun's very active right now. And, and uh, it says that it's warped the magnetic field. NASA, uh, the uh, national... Uh, is is there goes 16 satellite captured the sun's blast in a huge rush of mass uh, on November 15th, 2023, that warped the magnetic field, according to the European Space Agency. I think they can get a a better picture of it here, you know, but that's a pretty good picture of it blowing up. You know, basically, I guess what happens is is there's an area on the sun's surface where the red hot stuff starts to cool a little bit. It, it forms what's called a spot where the light can't get through and it's basically, I guess it's trying to form a crust. Well, pressure builds up underneath that sunspot and then boom, it blasts it off out into space as a coronal mass ejection because of all the pressure that builds up. I think that's how it works. If that's not how it works, you guys let me know in the comment section. Now, in the United States, you know, down in Texas, they've been having a hard time. They've been putting up fencing. Uh, they've been doing everything that they can to try to keep these migrant swarms on the other side of the, of the, of the river. Well, they've breached the United States southern border, and they left the National Guard helpless. It says, shocking scenes were caught on tape in El Paso. Uh... To Thursday afternoon when a massive swarm of angry illegal aliens stormed the key choke point to the U.S. southern border, breaking through the border wall and steamrolling the National Guard troops. So they just basically piled on through a mass of them. Now, in other news here, we've got a rapidly spreading fungus. It's in 27 different states. And the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, has warning about it. It says it presents an urgent threat, this fungus. So, fungal infections behave differently than standard infections, and they're... they're uh, it's antimicrobial resistant. So it says a fungus that poses an urgent antimicrobial resistance threat, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has already been detected in more than half of the United States states. It's called Candida urus, or C. aurus, I think it is. Uh, it's often resistant to antifungal drugs, making it a hard-to-treat infection. It can also be hard to identify with standard lab tests, making it even more difficult to treat properly and early. The fungus was first detected in the United States in 2016. It spread at an alarming rate between 2020 and 2021 in healthcare facilities. 
has continued to spread in 2022 and and now it's 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 on the loose in all these orange colored states uh, including california uh, nevada arizona utah colorado new mexico texas uh, louisiana uh, looks like georgia and alabama florida tennessee kentucky virginia pennsylvania new york it's all in Illinois, uh, Indiana, uh, Wyoming. No, it's just it's just in a lot of different not maybe not Wyoming, but in a lot of different states. You can see on this map, and it can be a deadly infection. Uh, it it can cause severe deadly infections. It can get in the patient's bloodstream. It enters the patient's bloodstream. This fungus sounds like zombies. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That was a joke. That was a joke, guys. Don't take it seriously. <laughs> but, you know, they say that there is something in insects where there's a, some sort of a fungal infection. It takes over the minds of the insects, you know. And, you know, these things do evolve sort of like they change and mutate and stuff like that. And so we already got it here. It's a rapidly spreading fungus you got to be very careful keep your hands clean um, be careful these places where you got to take you know like gyms and places like that when you take your uh, socks off and walk in your bare feet on the cement floor or whatever maybe in the area where they have the showers or whatever because athlete's foot is is a fungus and and you know how you typically catch athlete's foot well uh, this fungus is probably something similar and you probably catch it in a very similar way and it maybe it starts in places like like your feet or in around your eyes or ears or someplace like that and hygiene is very important and being careful where you put your hands and keeping your hands clean you know because you don't want that crying out loud all the new stuff they got coming out now it really tell that this is a, a final stages of, of of something huge coming we're seeing all of these effects occurring you know now Biden has trolled Trump over his debt uh, and how he trolled Trump is he says Donald I'm sorry I can't help you that's how he said, you know. Uh, it says President Joe Biden on Wednesday joked about his 2024 election appointment outsizing le uh, the legal troubles that Trump's having. Uh, and uh, so he's, he's trolled Trump on there. Let me see. Is this his quote? He said, Mr. President, I need your help. I'm crushing in debt. I'm completely wiped out, he said. After a moment, uh, Mr. Biden delivered the punchline, telling the crowd that he had responded, Donald, I'm sorry, I can't help you. It said that the at the fundraiser, uh, the attendees there, who numbered roughly 100, erupted into laughter. I guess that's a picture of it right there. So, that's going on. Now, Russians, have, uh, they've attacked Kiev big time this time. And they're trying to hit Kiev's, uh, right in Ukraine, Kiev, the main capital city of Kiev. They're trying to take out uh, power to Ukraine. They're really working hard on it right now. Ballistic cruise missiles shot down, but 13 injured and falling wreckage. Russia fired 31 ballistic missiles and cruise missiles at Kiev before dawn on Thursday. This is the first attack in the Ukrainian capital in 44 days. And they really hit hard. And they're trying now to knock the power out to all of Ukraine is what they're trying to do with this. Getting in there and taking a look at the silver price today. Silver's 24.65. I've been flirting around this $25 range up and down past and it past it goes past $25 for a little bit comes back down to $24 uh, right now it's at $24.65 gold today 
Gold is at 2174 today. It's down five dollars and sixty cents on the day so far. And we're taking a look at cryptocurrencies today. Now Bitcoin is at sixty-four thousand two hundred and seventy-three. Uh, so Bitcoin has, has taken a breather from its highs it set. And it's kind of just kind of, of, of floating around in the 60s. It has been for the last few days. And uh, will it heat back up again? This is the big question mark. And when? Uh, or will it cool off further? And I, I tend to think we're still in the bull. So... Ethereum is at 34.11, and uh, just a sec. Now I clicked off the page. But we want to get the XRP price, which is at 61.9 cents. Now taking a look at the Dow Jones today. Dow Jones is up 23 points at 39,804. So it's it's very close to crossing that Rubicon of 40 thousand Dow very very close taking a look at uh, crude oil today it's up 28 cents at 81.35 I tell you I think crude's gonna head to 90 bucks pretty soon and this is gonna help inflation taking a look at the bonds and rates today Now we're seeing fallen yields. We're looking at a 30 year that's fell 5.8 basis points and a US 10 year that's fell 5.9 basis points. So the, the 10 year stands at 4.21 and the 30 year stands at 4.38. Boy, that's awful cheap for a 30 year when you, you think one month is 5.36 and the 30 years is 4.38. Uh, that's something very wrong in the monetary system when that happens. 104.27 on the dollar index. And the dollar is going up today, but very slowly. Now, what was this article I had here? Now, I was wondering about this. Astronomers call for radio silence on the far side of the moon. So I got reading this article. It says there's a growing and passionate call for preservation of radio silence on the far side of the moon. First of its kind international symposium is being held this week, turning up the volume to mull over the prospect of protecting real estate on the moon's far side, exclusively for dedicated scientific purposes. Despite the moon being surrounded by a vacuum, there's an air of urgency to this meeting. Now see, that's what got me is... They formed this new group, uh, a first-of-its-kind international symposium. And it says there's an urgency to the meeting of this new group. I'm like, what's up with that? Why is there an urgency to all of this? Uh, it just rung a bell with me when it says there's an urgency to all this. Why? I mean, why would they care about the dark side of the moon. Uh, you know, I know that it's it's an area where we can't see the dark side of the moon. We don't know what in the heck's going on on the dark side of the moon. And we do know that it blocks out radio transmissions. Uh, it says that... Uh, the goal of the gathering is to set off a wake-up call that engages the global scientific, political, and industrial community to be aware of a growing list of concerns of electromagnetic pollution. The shielded radio waves generated by chatter on Earth and around it, with some meetings organizers seeing the need for radio silence zone, dubbing it a shield zone on the moon. I just don't understand the, 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 the rush and the concern. You know? And the urgency, it says, of this meeting. It says urgency of this meeting. What, what's go I don't know what's going on. Who knows? 
Could have could it have something to do with my story I did yesterday about a, a mau mau, a, a mua mua? No, it's a mua mua. That giant, what I consider to be a spacecraft that's floating around out there that we don't even know where it's at right. I don't, they won't tell us where it's at right now. Can't get much information on it. Who knows? Probably some strange things going on out there right now. Listen, thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. And have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.